if you can introduce yourself and your socials. Uh, my name is Mark Cuban, Mr. Mark Cuban and socials, the notorious. It is what it is. Cool, cool. What's, what's your favorite platform to use as well? Platform? Ooh, like, like social look, media platform. Social media platform. That's interesting. I mean, I'm, I've had conversation. It changes all the time. It just depends. It just depends on who's not sh restricting you and oh, who's right, trying right. to prevent you from, you know, it's all controlled anyway. Is but um, <sighs> YouTube. Right. Yeah. I prefer yeah. Uh, Rumble, to be fair. Okay, right. I, I don't like know much Rumble. about Rumble, yeah. Rumble is, um, is, is, I would call it a platform for the real, genuine people. It pays you the most. Right. Mm. And is, is it quite restrictive or not? Is it quite free? It's not restricted, yeah, but I had a discussion with uh, a friend of yours, I think yesterday, and I did my research, and I, I, I believe what it stands for. It pays, it pays what you're worth. Okay, right. Right? That's what I believe. More you than YouTube? I don't think YouTube will ever pay you what you're worth. Right. I think YouTube will, will give you encouragements to continue, but it's almost keeping you on a leash, mm. dangling the carrot, but you really should be going for the flipping the plantation field. And that's what I think Rumble does. I think Rumble gives you what you deserve and also opens your eyes to what you could achieve, which is great motivation. Fair enough. Off, yeah. off the top of your head, do you know what it pays per million views? Or? I have no idea, but- Do you know? I could come back to you with that oh. at some point. How, how would you describe what you do and, and your kind of, uh, your job or, or how you make a living? Um, social media is not really my job. It's more right. of an expression. Mm -hmm. um, hobby um, and I think everybody has a freedom to express themselves um, my normal 9-5 job I'm a construction engineer oh, nice. sectional yeah. engineer project manager um, you name it so I work within commercial developments and also private so yeah nice and did you get there through through studying yeah I studied I <coughs> uh, went to university studied interior design and spatial um, topped that up but mm. got bored, kind of fell into a placement, started at a medium place and kind of worked myself up gradually, continuing to educate myself with the resources that was given to me. Um, if I could do it again, I wouldn't have gone to university. How come? It's not needed? I just think I, I, I went to uni more to have the title to make my parents proud. Mm. And, and I think if I, if I had the choices or I was open up or exploited to the you know, my options then, I probably would have taken the apprenticeship and mentorship scheme. Right, right. Um, so, you, so you don't need a degree or? Don't I don't you... think, you, you do need a degree. I think degrees are very... Traditional. It's traditional. <laughs> if you want to become a doctor, mm -hmm. yeah, fine. Because that take, that's, that's much skill. But within certain fields like construction, um, I don't know, you know, media, for example, you mm -hmm. know, video, these are things that they're degrees for, but I don't think it should have a degree. I think it should have levels of, you know, transition. So level one, level two, to the highest possible with all hand-on experience. I'm a visual learner. So you also have to understand your learning capacity, how you learn and what suits you best. Um, but I don't think degrees are that important in this life. No, fair enough. I think they're actually trying to change the way um, you can become a doctor as well. Have, you, have you heard about that? Yeah. I don't think the money's even <laughs> worth it. So oh. I think that's a waste of time. <laughs> no, fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. They're saying that um, you can get a lot of your experience on the job now to I become a that, doctor. I, I think that would be very wrong for them to do that. Instead of the degree route? Yeah, I think the degree, I think it should work hand in hand. I mm. think to become a doctor, I don't know how long it takes now to be. Seven years. Seven years. Within yeah. that seven years, at least, I would say three to two years out that you should be working in the field and studying, which I think they do anyway. Yeah. So yeah. If, it, if it's not broken, don't, don't fix, fix it. it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, he. Mm. Um, so what was your kind of background, upbringing like? Um, upbringing, I'm from two immigrants, obviously. Um, my parents are very resourceful, mm -hmm. very traditional. Um, I'm from a very united family not everyone can say united um and yeah. what i mean by that is they don't just believe in the traditional vows they believe that they've made up you know oath between themselves and god mm -hmm. and that's important you might not love your partner for 10 years but because you made that you know oath with god you will continue because you can fall in and out but it's the co covenant you've made to walk this earth you know what i'm saying yeah 
And, and I mean, do, is that something you believe in as well? Yeah, I do. <coughs> that's why I'm not married. Okay, right, right. So it'll be a thing where when you're married, that's, that's what it would be, yeah? I do believe that, yeah. I believe that um, you, you have to marry someone that's ready to take that journey with you and struggle, rich, win with you, lose with you, mm -hmm. up to the end. Uh, do you feel like you've ever met someone like that or not yet? I think it's... I've probably had the possibilities of meeting one or two people, but I don't think at that time I was mature enough to take that decision. After, after university, what, what did you kind of do? Is it? Uh, I yeah. kind of used university, you mess around. Yeah. You, you try and find yourself. Um, I got into a bit of you know, club promotion. Um, I did that for about almost, almost been 10, 15 years now. Between that, because I stopped and started. All right. um, got into like sports. I've kind of had sports running from young. So various activities like boxing, Muay Thai, uh, rugby, football, decent footballer. Better rugby mm -hmm. player. Well, what position? Uh, what, for rugby? Yeah. Uh, wing. Wing, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So yeah, you're yeah. fast, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My okay, brother's okay. a professional rugby player, so. Oh, nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I guess we're blessed with certain things. You just got to have the brain with it as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nah, the rugby's a hard game. It is a hard <laughs> game, and it leaves you, leaves you with a lot of concussions. Yeah, yeah, you can get damaged quite easily, yeah. A lot of concussions and big, big injuries. What, was, what did you want to be when you were younger? That's crazy. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. Um, I don't think I really had a vision like that because I never mm. really envisioned myself becoming older. All right. Yeah, it was weird. It was kind of like I just was a, a passenger during the journey of growing up, do you understand? So it used to change all the time. I never really saw myself as an older man, which is weird. It's quite strange, right? So um, yeah. I think it was a footballer as most kids because you think that's what you want to be because everyone else wants to be a footballer. Um, I think, yeah, it was, I don't know. It's weird. I, I, I can't really tell you because it changed all the time. No, fair enough. Yeah, yeah it changed yeah. all the time. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. And then you were on Backchat London. How did you kind of get into that? Um, spoke to a friend of mine um, and he told me that there was a opportunity for someone to play a, almost like a, a, an alpha male all right for whatever for whatever that's worth so it's kind of like the description that you got <laughs> yeah all yeah. right right to come in and make trouble um and yeah i think i got f screened uh, mm -hmm. met the director we sat down spoke um he told me what he wanted and i believed i gave him what he needed was that through like an audition or? It was almost like I went through all of that. I sped, I mean, most people went through the audition process. I didn't, I was kind of just fast tracked, fast -tracked into it. Um, coming in from, I think it was like season two or three. So everybody had already kind of had their alliances. So I was mm. kind of one of uh, three new characters, but the only one that kind of stayed on in that. And I definitely know I'll probably be one of the top remembered. Yeah, yeah. 100%. <clears throat> was it was a nerve-wracking going on there? Or? It was nerve-wracking, but I had one or two people in there that I already kind of knew from outside. Mm. Um, yeah, it was a good experience. Um, it showed me what media is kind of really about mm. and how things can be pulled and manipulated and exaggerated and scripted to get the cause of effect. Right. And so I feel like that's what happens with most things. Is that what it was like? All right. 100%. 100%. <clears throat> did, they, did they want you to be yourself or did they almost want it, it you to be? It is yourself because they're yeah. incentric characters. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I'm an, I'm a, I kind of feel like I am who I am. I'm a man's man. I have my flaws like everybody else. And um, I think we were told to be 20% of ourselves, 20% oh, right, right. more. So For imagine TV. we're having a conversation. We can be yeah. having a conversation now. But if I happen to say something really silly, I'm not having the opportunity to take it back. That's what's used. So what, what says so the raw kind of... Yeah, it's the, yeah. It's the rawness, but it's also, it, it serves its purpose. No, I get you. Um, did you have, con so you didn't have much control of the content, I guess? I wish I did now. I wish I did, but <laughs> I don't regret anything. I think I've, no? I've kicked on from that. Um, people only see you in a certain demographic of light. Yeah. And, but you also have to be responsible for the light they see you in. But you're not prepped. I'm, I'm not a staged, coached actor. You know, I'm, I'm a normal person with my mm. flaws and all. So however you see me, that's me, but I still am developing. 
So in that show, uh, that was, it was a, it's, it's, a, it's been a long time. But the person I was then, I'm not the person no more. So. Did you, did you get any kind of media training before? No, not at all. Like not at all. I think even the production itself was quite young guys. You know, young guys, yeah. young girls. This is for them. This is their business. So I guess no one has that full expertise. Yeah. Mm. And the cast members are they kind of? Would you say the their characters the same? Or their personalities the same? Some of them are. Some of them are. I think some of them are dickheads in real life, you know. But they're a bit different on camera? Or? Yeah, 100%. Some, oh, people, right. some people did play up to the camera. Yeah. And um, you can tell who they are. Because when it was off camera, you, you know what time it is. That's, yeah. that's what I mean, yeah. It must yeah. have been quite weird off camera. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's all, it, it all used to be very much stuff like, um, oh, don't take it personal. It was just... But at the end of the day... It's still your opinion. So if you mm. come there, you have to know your why. Yeah, your why yeah. is important. If you come there, and you want to be an asshole. Own it. Yeah. Don't do different off camera. Because that's what everyone's going to see now. That's yeah. everyone's going to see that. And if I had known that now, yeah, I probably would have been a bit more reserved. Right. I would have been a bit more reserved because everyone's going to have an opinion. A blank canvas has multiple opinions of what it is. So yeah. No, fair enough. Um, <clears throat> how would you describe the kind of experience as a whole? Was it a positive one or a bit weird or...? It was... Hmm. Once in a lifetime. <laughs> Once in a lifetime. It was, it was good. I mean, you can't hate on people. And I think the production as a whole, they, you know, they set the trend for a lot of things now. Mm. You know, and when all the smoke drops, you have to really look. It's creative. It's really creative. You it create is. a universe. Mm. Look at 50 Cent. You don't see, or look at P. Diddy. I look at P. Diddy as one of the biggest creative directors there are. Mm -hmm. Why? Because everything he does is deliberate. So, and some people will do whatever needs to be done to get what they need. And in that process, you might create stars, you might create villains, you might create inspirational people along the way. And that could be by accident, but it's also by design because you've created that opportunity for that to happen. So mm -hmm. for that, I'm grateful. I get you, I get you. Would you, would you go on another reality show? Depends on what it is and the game. You know, I've always looked at things like, you know, the circle. I've been approached for the circle. Um, come dine with me. Um, what's the other one? Blind date or not blind date. What's the other one? Where you go to, they set you up on a date or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, first dates. Yeah, yeah. First date. They've approached me for um, who dares wins or something like that. All these army. They're the kind of things I'd love to be in. Oh, so these ones are approaching you, but... I've yeah, been... they approach me, yeah, yeah. and these, they, you, you know, here's, they come to your DMs, they are with... Um, it's all these selective agents. Yeah. They're all working on commission base, and they're putting forward people who they believe are... have good chances of, you know, going all the way. Yeah. Um, I was not, I'm not represented by agent or management, so everything I do is myself and my small tribe who kind of sift through it. And um, yeah, it was, some of the experiences have been good and some have just pulled out. Of it. I have no interest in it. I have no interest. But you said you'd go on um, like an army one. Yeah, I, I, got, I went to uh, a screening for that actually. I uh, nice, got yeah. round two. We had to do quite a competitive challenge. So such as like a fitness and endurance test, a uh, psychoanalysis test. Uh, they do obviously they do the cross reference, the back checks. You know, if you've got anyone that's have you been involved in anything that's so on and so forth? Yeah. Um, but they also do do the same thing, which is screen you and try to sell your character. So I remember with right. one particular lady, she wanted me to play, and I don't care now because <laughs> I think they chose someone else, but yeah. such is life. They wanted me to play a Navy or an Army, someone who just left the Army. Oh, right. Um, I wanted to play like a strong-minded, you know, I suited that role to come on and um, come against the other contestants with that kind of experience. And I had to make up a whole 
backstory of who I was, where I came from, that it's all shaped for you. So what wow. they're kind of doing is just trying to put a face to the character profile. And I never thought that was even real in some cases, yeah, but no. it's very, very real. Um, but yeah, yeah. So knowing this, does it make you look at TV shows a lot differently? 100%. I, I, never, I look at everything as fake. Everything you see is fake. Mm. Television is television. Program, programming is programming. It's all just to make your subconscious aware of what is possible. And if it's possible, it's doable. Damn. Mm. No, fair enough. I, di I didn't know that at all. You didn't? No, not, 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 on, not, not, working... not, not that they script it that much. Come on, boss. As in, like, this is who you are, this is your character you're like, playing. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so, so that it doesn't look wrong. Like, for example, what we were doing earlier on, you sif, you swap, you change, you mould. Mm. I didn't know it was that fake. Oh, bro, it's <laughs> fake. crazy, Come yeah. Come on, bro. It's a machine. So is that kind of open your, your mind to like it has a lot to of things a lot being of fake? Things. Yeah. It, I've always <laughs> been someone that's very, like, I have a very creative and... I have a very um, deep mind, I would say, so I'm not stupid. I don't believe everything I see, but even more so, when you kind of sit back and not react straight away, and you watch everything from a, you know, a consumer mm. point of view, you will see that everything is deliberate. It's oh. by design. There's nothing that's happened that's not by design. I keep on saying it, but that's the key role, social construct. I think a lot of people kind of think of you as a conspiracist when they hear something like that, if you understand what I mean. What is conspiracy though? What's your definition? My conspiracy is facts. Is it? If it can be thought, listen, we've all been born with the same cap you know, capabilities. Mm -hmm. See, touch, feel, you know, so on and so forth. If a Porsche is exist existing, why is a Porsche existing? A Porsche is existing because someone thought about it, somebody made it, somebody designed it. So if he can do that, why can't I do that? So, all these things out in the world that I exist in, mm -hmm. I've, I've even put it down as far to weather. You know, weather's controlled. I believe in a lot of these things because I think, why would it not? Why would it not be? But what, what would be the kind of reason for controlling no, the weather? There's no, uh, what's the reason? All right, cool. Let me ask you this. Yeah. If there was peace, would there be any money? Would there be profit? I feel like it still would be profit. What, where? Um, through selling of goods and trading. You, where? The fact that you're even saying selling of goods, that's even the wrong mindset to think of. That's all been brought in for a reason, to create and to, to class everybody. If you, what about if you can't afford something? Well, then what? Then you'd have to save. But what about if you don't have the patience to save? Because you want it now. I guess then you turn to other things. You turn to other things, and if you turn to other things, what does that create? Not peace. Exactly. <laughs> Opposite of peace. Yeah. So if, if, if you have peace, you have no money, you have no profit, you have none of these things. So everything that is, happens is done for a profitable gain. Such as, uh, for example, drugs. If you want to talk about drugs, all mm -hmm. right, cool. People sell drugs to make and live an exceptional life to their standards of living, mm -hmm. right? Where they, would there be drugs? if police actually crack down on it. Or um, harsh, when I talk about harsh, I'm talking about there was no, there was zero tolerance. I'm not talking about people taking brown backhanders. I'm not talking about people, you know, letting it slide. I'm not talking about people lying in their pockets. I'm talking about completely eradicate it. No, so because they know they can manipulate it and do other things, what do you then do? Then do you create a service and demand and so on and so forth. So, Everything is not what it seems because everything has its place. I've probably gone round and round and confused you, but that's how I think everything, everything plays a part in a big puzzle. No, I get what you mean, because I know drugs do a lot for the economy as well. It does. A lot. Come on. Mm. What happens now? Weed. How long has that been taken? It, the moment they legalise it, it loses its value. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? They, they, they legalise it, it loses its value. Why? Because it has to go through pharmaceutical companies and then there's things that have to prove are safe for consumption by human beings. So what do they do? They deem it as unsafe so that you fray away from it and you don't give their money away to people that can benefit that are not in their system. Do you understand? In order to take money and earn a certain amount, you have to belong or pay taxes. Mm -hmm. And we all know taxes is a crook thing anyway. So these are things you have to think of. So when people say, is it conspiracy? I laugh at that, I think you're an idiot. It's not conspiracy, it's just because you don't want to use your brain or enlighten yourself. Your brain is not just 5%, it's a big muscle, use it.
Mm. So what what are some? I'm going to use the term again just for just for yeah I'll, context. I'll, yeah, go on, of course. Um, what are some conspiracy theories you've heard that that you kind of believe in? That I believe in, yeah. Ooh. Uh, that religion is a business, right? With uh, which religion? All religions. All religion. Mm -hmm. But you're um, you're from a Christian background. Back yeah, but I don't believe in any. I believe in God. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in religion. Okay, right. So if you look at terminology as Christian, yeah. people used to mock people that followed Christ, right? That's mm -hmm. what they used to call them Christians, mocking. Do you understand? I don't want to be in a situation where, see, if I speak how I really want to speak, I'll, I'll get cancelled. But do you know what? Fuck it. The way you've got to see it is, when a certain demographic of people came to Africa, mm -hmm. what did they use to terrorise it? Religion. Religion. And then what did they do in order to educate and give privileges back to them people you rob from them then you give back them give back to them what they originally own but how do you do that you structure them you realign them you make them talk like you walk like you dress like you and then you create a system where they have to follow and then what do you do to demoralize them and to stop them from thinking you sell them a big dream which is religion you sell them christianity you sell them the other religions you sell them something that they can hang on to because why else would you get up and believe you can strive to do more? I believe that we're all built to serve a purpose. Be strong, be the best that we can. Stop looking outside, look within yourself. Mm. Faith. What does God want with money? Why do you pay tithes? Why do you, make, why do you pay offerings? So you don't believe in, in tithes and offerings? I don't believe in tithes and offerings. What, 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 what good of it is to God? If, if gold and silver is God's anyway because it's on his earth, how can I make a transaction to God and say, God, please check my heart and from my heart take my finances to take an appreciation? It has no value to him. If you want to sacrifice, you want to pay him offering, you sacrifice your flesh by discipline. I'm not talking about harming yourself. I'm talking about fasting. You fast because when you fast, you weaken your flesh so you connect more with your spirit. And that's when you now start talking. Be still, as they say. I feel like, the Bible, the Quran, and other religious books mm -hmm. are guidelines in order to be a abiding citizen, a moderate citizen. But there are also wise words who were written by authors. That's what I believe. They were written by authors in order to kind of give people hope, faith. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Without faith, what are you doing? That's like you telling me, someone has been good their whole life, right? But because they don't believe in Jesus Christ or they don't believe in Allah, they're going to die and go to hell. Does that make sense? Depends what you believe in. Depends on what you believe in. How about if you're a good person, you're a good person. If you're a bad person, you're a bad person. It's karma. You do good, good comes back. You do bad, bad comes back. So who, who governs what, what good and bad is? Energy. The earth. Where we sit. God. Not religion, not man. But religion is a yeah. man-made thing. So what, what governs you? As in, what, what do you believe is... How do I you... used to believe, I, used yeah. to, I was brought up a Christian. Yeah. I used to believe it was faith. I used to believe it was that. I looked, I've looked in the answers everywhere. But I've noticed that we are all artists. We're very good with our words. If you see someone that you want to be like, and they start talking words of wisdom, you take to them and that makes you believe, right? But then mm -hmm. that didn't do nothing for me because I was still in the same place. So what governs me is accountability. If I'm accountable or I acknowledge every decision I make in my life will push me into certain places that will lead me to live a better life. There is no position that we're in life right now that is not by our own doing. Be accountable, take responsibility. Mm -hmm. that's what governs me accountability do you, do you have any role models or anyone you kind of myself would want, would want to work with myself <laughs> probably the only person I would want to probably speak to like I said because mm -hmm. of the way he formulates his uh, I think his name is Raza Re he's American you might know who I'm talking about he wears glasses I call him the new age Mark, um, Malcolm X <laughs> you know what I'm saying mm. I like guys that drop <laughs> gems Guys that unpack things, not just sell you something, you unpack it. 
Do you like the truth? I like the truth. Yeah. yeah. If we talk about dating, what's, what's your type in a woman? I can, <laughs> I can talk about the machine type. Do, do you have a type? I used to think I had a type. Yeah. I, I have a sexual type. And yeah, we all like something to grab onto, you know. So you like the thicker woman? I like a woman, you know, the whole meaning, woman, you know, like full. It's like voluptuous, like a voluptuous, audacious. Slim thick, someone takes pr pride in themselves. Okay, right. Glamorous, effortless, you know. But then it's all about that, yeah, that's my type physically and mentally, it's all about, that's what keeps me there. You have to be intelligent. You know, you have to be able to pour into me as I want to pour into you. I think it's, it's very, very honourable. Pause, right. pause, pause. Because <laughs> I just saw that and he reminded us, yeah, let me say pause. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of people are pouring into each other, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, let's keep it. Keep it PG. Ah, right, so is there any kind of racial preference? Um, that's, that's interesting. Um, beauty has no colour, man. But I couldn't see myself with a, a woman that doesn't have any form of tradition. Tradition is, yeah, tradition is important. Are these cultural tra traditions? I think so. But yeah. we know who they are. If you know where you're from, you, you have tradition. Some people don't have tradition. Mm. They literally don't. They're vampires. And vampires go around doing what? Sucking blood from everybody else mm. to live. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be part of that tradition. Fair enough. Do you prefer natural women? Or do you, you don't mind I'm women I'm having a bit of my of BBLs. <laughs> but I've come to understand that um, <laughs> if it ain't done right, it feels like hard like Play-Doh, you know? Oh, so if it's done wrong, it's, it's, it's hard. If it's done wrong, it's horrible. Mm. You're looking at the aesthetics, but you know, I, I like bread. You see like hard old bread? I like, to, I like my hands to squeeze through it. If you ain't squeezing through it, then it's like me squeezing another guy's bum. Pause. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah. I like, I like, I've come to appreciate little things. I like stretch marks. I like little fupa. You know, I like the. So. You know, I like it. So you don't mind a little fupa, no? No, no, I like a little fupa. You can grab that thing, you know? You okay, just, okay. I don't mind it. <laughs> like a real woman, then? I like, that's insane, a real mm. woman. Are, are BBLs neg a bad thing or? I think, I don't think they're bad things because I think, I think they are, I think they've been made accessible. But too accessible? Too accessible. Right. And I think every person that goes and does it now, everyone's got health, different health conditions. What's for you is not for me and what's for me is not for you. So I think there are some genuine reasons why people will do them. And I respect that, such as, you know, they've had kids, low self-esteem, but mm -hmm. <laughs> These are things that are like body dysmorphia. I understand that. But then the health complications in the long run, you can't cheat gravity. <laughs> you can't cheat gravity. It's all eventually going to go downhill. Right. So um, obviously you go gym as well, right? Yeah. What, what do you think of BBOs and, and females going gym? Do they? I think, I think yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a lie. It's, 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 it's the wrong idea. But I understand it for the marketing purposes. But you, what you're doing is you're in you're basically showing other girls how to cheat. Because mm. there's loads of females who do BBLs now, or they do the gastric bands, or they're doing the injections or the pens, then they're going to the gym, or they go to the gym for a short number of, short time, and then mm. they just revert back to themselves and then they end up flying out again. So you end up paying more and cutting your line thinner each time and keep on putting yourself under more danger and more danger. And let's not talk, let's not forget about the women that are, you know, the deaths that have been happening. Mm -hmm. Look at the guy from Wild and Out show, I forgot the comedian's name. His wife was what, 32? She died, she went to go and do a body reconstruction. Wow. BBL, she passed away, God rest her soul. She was stunning before it, but I'm sure that her and her partner had a discussion, but it was more for her to feel herself. But, and the doctor came out later on and did some pointless, interview or are we talking about the girl that dated Raheem Sterling mm -hmm. and a few other fully I think her name's Tabby Brown she passed away recently wow. and they're saying this is complications or there's another famous pastor that we 
know within our Nigerian community whose whose wife, who's a Christian, so she first passed the first lady of the church who's wow. supposed to be preaching about acceptance of self, loving yourself, flew out to go and do a tummy tuck. I didn't know that. And she didn't make it. Wow. So what are you really doing? I'm not against it, but I really push for people to go and understand the full extents of it. Read the small print. Do you, do you reckon more girls should just go to the gym instead? I think, it's a, it's, I think people should understand more about the foods that they're intaking than their genetical structures and their setup. Mm. You're never going to be perfect. You, you, listen, you, can, you will never be perfect. We all have some forms of things of ourselves that we would like to improve. I did my hair. I said, it's not going back. I rebuke it. I'm bringing it forward. <laughs> my teeth were jacked up. They looked like scattered forks. What did I do? I fixed it. Was it turkey or? It's always turkey. God bless turkey. But you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I, I appreciate the efforts. But what I'm trying to say is if you, there has to be a limit where you draw the line. For your own sake. Mm. Come on. How much? You know, I'm seeing every girl now has got lip fillers, nose fillers, cheek fillers. And they're lying about it. Meaning in the sense of, you go, oh, I've noticed something different. No, what are you talking about? I'm like, your lip is not moving. Your top lip and your nose, it's not moving. And I'm not shaming them, I'm not talking them down, but it's like, they're all starting to look like factory settings. Mm. Okay, fair enough, you're gonna have a go at me and say, but you done your teeth and you done your hair. And, okay, cool, yeah, I did. But there has to, I, like I said, there has to be a limit. I've limited myself. I wish I could do my, chest or my legs or whatever, but I'm not going to do that because I'd rather work for that. Yeah. Do you understand? You have to have a line of discipline, work for some things. Some things are never going to be perfect, no matter how much filling you put in your face. Okay, so right, so you're saying it's, um, it's a bit better if you do like your insecurities, but, but when you start to kind of do a bit of everything... I think your, your whys are important. Mm. Okay, right. Okay. If you've got a man who's telling you you ain't shit, maybe you're the man. Don't be with yourself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you feel like it's been something that's just really eats at your confidence, I don't know. People have their personal dark secrets. Make sure that your whys are matching up. Make sure it's making sense. Don't just do it for short-term gain. It's life-changing. That's true. Mm. That's true. Mm. There's a lot of men now getting... Have you seen it? 100%, bro. Do I'll know, do, do it. You know, I'll do it. Do you know what I'm going to say? Yeah. What, the BBLs? Or no, the dick no. enlargements. No, no. <laughs> Pause. Are they doing that? Bro, there's dick enlargements, there's height extensions. But you said you'll do it, which one? No, the stomach. Alright, <laughs> oh, right, right. right. Pause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, because I mean LA Cool J was doing it. These lot have been doing it for years. Oh. LA Cool J did it years ago. What the the, the fake abs? Yeah, come on. Come on. I see that guy on Big Brother, was it? With a, with I, did, a fake I, abs. I don't watch Big Brother. It was, a, it was a white guy and he was quite big. It didn't mm. even make sense. And he had the, he had the fake abs. He yeah, he looked crazy. Yeah. Action. But then he looked crazy because he's not putting in the work otherwise. Yeah. Shortcut. Yeah. Shortcut. But then at the same time, there are, some, there are some sports professionals, like sports models, male models, who are doing ab etching. They're putting, um, I think, that, I can't remember the name of the, there's a, there's a, there's a type of oil that fills you up. All oh, right. It's also dangerous. I'm sure you've seen these stupid skits where you see your arm, a guy yeah. with massive arms. That's the stuff they're using. Damn. I yeah. thought that was steroids. No, no, no. no. Right, steroids, right. you can tell stories from a mile away. But no, that's not steroids. No, no. Right. But some people are now doing um, height. Yeah. Have you seen it? If they're, I was short, I'll do the it. leg extensions. Yeah, if I was short, I'll do it too because the, the social construct <laughs> has made that short men ain't shit. How tall are you? I'm 6'4". Six, 6'4", um, six four. Six four. okay. Yeah. So what, what height would you need to be to, I think to extend? It's not the height of yourself, it's the height of your pocket. That's what girls are really looking for. But I mean, I don't know what it is that girls, when the girls see height, they, it blinds them and they get confused. And then they just, it's like they're not seeing guys that are on their eye level. You know, it's weird. It's weird. I don't know. It's social construct, isn't it? Just how we see girls with BBLs and big bums. And then we look at girls that are slim. We don't even pay them attention. But they're pretty, so <laughs> no, that's true. You know, it's preference. Mm. Preference. Um, is calling a man short body shaming? I think it should be. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same as calling a woman fat. It's, or... Yeah, calling her fat Michelin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I called a woman, you're fat, and she called me short, how would you feel then? You know, it's body shaming is body shaming. If you're taking a girl out, how much would you spend on the first date? That's interesting. Depends on how much I like her. 
right. or what my intentions are with her. If it's just a quick, uh, I probably, I, I mean, it depends. Look, you, it's, it's like securing the bag, isn't it? You, you, you got, you got a budget, but if your budget is too low, then you shouldn't even be in the game, and you're better off just getting a brass, <laughs> cut out a small tool, pay a little sixty pound, get the whole shebang, and then keep it moving. <laughs> but how much, how much have you spent on a first date? Um, if you want to, if you want to take a go out, six fifty on one six, date. Six fifty, yeah. What did you do? Yeah, I did too much. <laughs> <laughs> I think I spent more on the image than the actual date. I think I spent about two hundred and fifty on the date, mm. and at the time I wasn't driving, so I rented a car for the date. Oh, I see, I see. Do you understand, dickhead? Because I didn't even smash. Oh, no. <laughs> didn't, didn't smash, but I didn't smash more on my terms. I didn't think... It's weird, because I, I never knew dating to be like that. So we just didn't click. And I have never thought I would ever hear that. You know, you just think, I'm good looking, she's good looking, or good looking to whoever. Yeah. And that's it. But then when you notice there's no chat, so what, what, what did I take you out for? Oh, it was a dead date. She was just, I could literally hit the, you know, the knife and fork was doing more talking than she was, you know, so. Yeah, never again though. Damn. Yeah. Has, a girl, has a girl ever taken you out? Yeah. Hmm? I, but it feels uncomfortable. Does it? <laughs> it feels mad <laughs> uncomfortable. Because you just have to picture in your mind if shit goes left, she's going to tell everybody that she took you out. Mm. Trust me. Girls, okay, not all girls, because I don't want to get shot. Yeah, but nowadays girls, or nowadays, I say girls, there's a difference between girls and women. Sophisticated women mm -hmm. will do it when and if to treat their man, so on and so forth. And whatever happens in their quarters stays in their quarters. Immature people or immature girls will use that as a form of a get back. You're not even, you're not even all that anyway, you're broke. How am I broke? Because you took me, I, cause you took me out. Yeah, a man's a provider. You're a protector. I should never have to pay for nothing. But you offered to pay. Yeah, I only offered to pay to see if you was gonna pay. <laughs> Dumb games. It's like trickery. Mm. <clears throat> well, at what point does it feel uncomfortable? Is it, is it when the waiter comes? I over? think it's when the waiter comes. I mean, I, I don't know you. about you, but like, I, I've been, in, I've only been in that situation like twice. Yeah. And it's, it's the. It's the really uncomfortable stare from the waiter with the PDQ. <laughs> and they're like, they're like, no, I insist. They're like, no, no, I've got this. And you just think to yourself, what is the waiter thinking? Because the waiter is just there thinking, yeah, he's broke. Like, oh, why is, you know, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. I, I just, I don't feel comfortable with it. So I don't really like it. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. I'm you the know. same. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I will rather pay and then say, yeah, just leave it like that. And I, pay. Oh, mm. Let the woman have her money. You know what I'm saying? You want to treat? That's fine, baby. You can treat me in other ways. Let me treat myself. Just treat us. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But you're more or less, you're protecting yourself. You know, don't give nobody the opportunity to call you out. No, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you quite traditional? When, like, say if you've got a girlfriend, partner, mm -hmm. would you be um, traditional in general roles? I'm too traditional. I'm too traditional. Right. But I In think which way? It, to a fault. Um, there's a lot of things that certain a class of people do now that I totally don't agree with, and like I'm very funny on girls having social medias. Is it? Yeah. Open social media. You're you're accessible. You're you're leaving opportunity there to rise. It. And when we as men or some men have these kind of faults is deemed as insecure. I see it as I'm protecting something that I value as sacred. Yes, I, can, I also have the mindset of this. I'm not worrying about what the men are doing. I'm worrying about how she responds. But prevention is also better than cure. Do you have to have a social media? What purposes does it fit in your life? Do you need validation from other people? Because that's what Instagram is. Is she, would she be wrong for just having an Instagram and, and using I, I, it? Normal, I'm not normal? against it, yeah. but I do question. What, her reasons why? Yeah, I do question. You have to question because it's, when you get to each other, or you get to a relationship with anybody, you have to have communication with your expectation for yourself, but you also have to have it as a, a company or 
two people together. You mm -hmm. have to communicate that. What are my, your expectations? What are my expectations? Otherwise, you're going to collide. I'm not saying she shouldn't, but I would rather not. Uh, rather not that she doesn't have a social yeah. media. Yeah. yeah, I'd rather. Some people would say, oh, it's because he's trying to hide shit. No, you protect, you, you protect your home. Just like you wouldn't want your kids to have Instagram, right? Because there's so much dangers out there. Mm. Is, there is there a difference though? Because um, if she's a good looking girl, I'm sure, you know, men would yeah, hence appro why. approach her on the street. As, as the street. a man, you become territorial, yeah. you become protective. And they, women always say, oh, you want us to protect. But protection is also seeing long-term and seeing things that they may not be able to see. They're not going to be able to see everything or understand everything, but it's about reasoning. If it's, she says, oh, I just have an Instagram for business purposes, or, oh, I want to take pictures. Okay, you want to take pictures and do what with it? Show the world. What kind, what kind of pictures are we taking? I want to show the world that I look nice. But why does the world need to know that you look nice? It's only important between us, family, close friends. But when you now pull it out there, you're opening up yourself to unwanted energies, unwanted uh, criticism, unwanted attention. These are things that we don't think of. But if it now comes to me, I'm going to look at, I'm going to be looked at as, oh, he's insecure. It's not insecure. It's just my preference. I'm not against it. I'm not against it, but um, I definitely believe I definitely believe it's a, it's a choice and it should be something that should be discussed. Right, right, fair enough. Do, do you understand where I'm coming from? I, I, I get your reasons. There's right? no force. Yeah. There's not, I'm not forcing you to, but I just think a lot of relationships, let me, let, me, let me give it to you like this. A lot of relationships end. Why? Various reasons. Various reasons, mm. but what are the most common? If we've had a chart, what would be the top three? Probably cheating, isn't it? Where does che cheating comes from choice. Too much choice, too much comes from opportunity. Mm -hmm. If you don't have opportunity, it doesn't keep, kill the tendency of wanting to cheat, but it restricts it and it kind of, you know, it kind of limits the opportunity. So limits. do you feel like um, because she's in a relationship, her choices should be a bit more limited? Well, she's in a relationship. If she's in a committed relationship, mm. I think there's certain expectations that come with a relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why, you know, I'll send you it later, you can have a look at it, but one of the biggest reasons why relationships do not succeed is because of uncommunicated expectations. Mm. I if I say that, to yeah. you, well, yes, we know it's finance. Yes, we know it's, um, you know, some people have other conditions and stuff and so forth, but most of it, the time is social media. How many times have you been in a situation where a girl tells you, oh, babe, these guys keep on DMing me and telling me I look nice. Why are you telling me that? Because you want to make me jealous? You want to tell me that you still got it? What are the reasons for doing that? Mm. And if you're able to, how do you even see these things? You see these things because you want to see these things. Because you go looking for these things. Or even a DM though? A DM? How do you know it's there? Because you check your messages. I get DMs. Mm. The only reason I go looking is because I have interest to see what it's about. So I use myself, for example. Yeah. So if I'm only going to notice if a girl is trying to holler at me if I'm going to look to see what's there. But if I know that's something that happens consistently, what happens one day when we have an argument? Or we're going through a rough patch? The opportunity arises. You've got millions of guys messaging you. Right? And we know how guys are. So... And it's vice versa. If you give someone that opportunity, oh, my boyfriend's not, you know, he's pissing me off, I love him. And then before you know it, you walk in and your girl's getting smashed. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> that's, the worst, that's the worst case scenario. Not me though, but it's the worst case scenario. <laughs> I hear you. Have, have you been cheated on before? I like to say not to my knowledge. Okay, right, right. But I've heard things mm. and it always makes me laugh. Because you're not cheating on me, you're cheating on yourself. Because as soon as you cheat on me, I'm gone. I'm doing my own thing. But some people can't handle that. So what did they do? They try to mask you as the bad person. And it's happened a few times. And have you, have you cheated on a woman? It's not a straightforward question, is it? It's not a straightforward question because 
I could say yes and I could say no. Mm. I would say in my younger years, I didn't understand the whole setup of boyfriend and girlfriend, so I did as I pleased. If I got caught in the action, I'll say, yeah, so? I'm not married to you. That was my response then. Mm. Do you understand? I, didn't really, of, yeah. I had no empathy. I, I lacked that connection, that emotional connection for me to understand the depth of what a relationship really meant. I, my mind was still in primary school stage mm. of boyfriend and girlfriend. That doesn't mean anything, Mwah, kiss, but I'm still open to anything. But as I've matured and I've got a lot older, I understand that if, you're, if you don't want to be in something, don't be in it, be free. Mm. If you don't want to be responsible, don't be responsible. If you want to be responsible, do it. You, do you think there's been a strong change in, um, over time of kind of what females' expectations are? 100%. In, in regards to relationships? I think it's always changing. I think the narrative has been... But I don't even think they know why they think like that. Mm. They've been conditioned to think like that, but they think they're thinking on their own will. It's all social construct. It's all, an, it's all an energy that's been pushed for them to think like that. Expectations have been changed in order to separate the classes of people, right? Like I said to you before, making the women more independent, which is fine, mm -hmm. but so independent that they don't need the man. But of course you need a man. You need a man to pre-create, but people are going to now start saying, but you're going to have... That's not how it's supposed to be. It's not meant to be like that. Everybody should play their role according to what they feel, right? I know what's good for me, know what's good for you, but it changes because nobody knows what's good for them. They are sheep. Everybody's following what they think is good. You buy uh, Balenciaga's today, I guarantee you 10 men will wear Balenciaga's, Balenciaga's tomorrow. Not because it fits right on them, because they want to fit in. Mm. Such is the same with certain class of people, women and men. Do you understand? A woman, if she's with her, she could be a good girl, but when she's exposed to other girls who have a certain expectation, she's no longer thinking like herself no more or what's important to her. She's now thinking like the others. So you think like who you keep or you are who you are surround yourself with. Do you, do you think that's um, a negative thing that women are more independent now? Do you, would you no, still see them as, as like a wife quality? I think it, it has to have, everything has to have balance. It needs to have balance. Yeah. When a woman becomes too independent or too much in her ways and becomes confused in what independence means, mm -hmm. she now becomes toxic towards everybody and herself because she deprives herself from finding true love. She doesn't realize that she can be independent, but she also needs to be able to understand where her limitation comes. You need to allow a man to be a man and a woman to be a woman. What do you mean by that? I think we spend too much time, or the masses spend too much time telling, excuse me, telling each other what a man is a woman telling a man what a man's meant to be and a man telling what a woman's meant to be. It, mm. it, it can never be. You're not a woman. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, you're not a man. So mm. how am I going to tell you how to be? And then what did he refer to? Because it is said that in so-and-so, this is what a man's... That's unrealistic expectations. And then you're going to fail. And that's why expectations are failed because... When people don't understand it, they now start referring and referencing. And when you reference, you're comparing. And when you compare, you're never going to meet the match. That's what happens. And then everybody's fucked. <laughs> Could, uh, so you work in construction, right? Yes. Um, a lot of the jobs, because I've, I've worked in construction as yes. well. So I know you've got labor jobs, you've got... You've got you know, Skilled professions, yep, got so on and so far. Mm -hmm. every, every other job. Could, could a woman do a lot of those? Women are. Mm, okay. But there are some jobs that physically yeah. a woman cannot do. She can, but she will be slightly limited. She'll be limited. Why? Because of genetics. Mm -hmm. You can't play with nature. A man is designed and is built to be physically more imposing than a woman. Yeah. And a woman has certain strengths and qualities that are better than a man. And that's why it's important for two to come together and work for the better of what? One. Mm -hmm. But we're so confused. Oh, yeah, I could do it. No, it's not meant to be like that. That's confusion. And then when you're confused, everybody ends up, up upset. You know what I'm saying? So going back to gender roles, mm. which last question on that. Mm. Um, 
when it comes to finance and being like the breadwinner, you mm. know, are you, are you quite traditional in that or? Yeah, yeah, I, I do believe. I feel like um, I've seen, I mean, I grew up with that kind of setup. My dad was, my dad was the sole provider, but my mum right. played a part too. Yeah. My mum did what she needed to do. I'm not going to give her roles. She, she paid one or two little things that she felt, because she felt like she wanted to contribute. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you give a woman shopping, she'll make you a feast. You give a woman a house, she'll make a home. Mm. This is how it's meant to be. A man is meant to go out, take on the world. That's why we're built physically and posing. And a woman is supposed to relax and make you, relax you, you know, assist you, you know, align your thought processes properly because she's the thinker. Mm -hmm. Men are also thinkers too, but a woman's, they're the daggers, they're sharp. You know what I'm saying? A man is like, we're the tanks, we're the ammo. So when it comes to settling down, um, do you have yeah. plans to get married in the future and, and settle down? Is that your kind of goal? I do, but then that's a question that I think is, uh, I think when that time comes, I'll know. Yeah. Because I believe that relationships are seasonal. I don't believe everything will, is supposed to be the way, you know, marriage, that whole idea, where did that come from? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I could marry for the purpose of everybody else is getting married but I need to do it for myself. But as long as I have a healthy relationship with someone, that's what that matters to me. Have you bought gifts for girls? Is that interest? Yeah, of course. Is it? Yeah, are, you, are you kind of... Uh, I don't, yeah. I don't buy, I'm not, <laughs> I, I won't buy anything that your daddy can't buy you. Don't ask me for nothing okay, your daddy right, can't right. buy you. What, what kind of gifts then? What kind of... The common, the, you know, the bags, shoes. What, designer bags though? Yeah. Even oh, if right, it's from right, TK Maxx, right. I don't care. As long mm. as I'll buy you the Chanel's, I'll buy, I ain't buying you a Birkin. I don't give a fuck how <laughs> rich I am or how I'm not doing that. Mm. It don't make logical sense to me. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, it, it depends on your love language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is also a construct. Do you think it's okay for women to hit men? And if so, is it okay for men to hit him back in that situation? Is it okay for a man to hit a woman? Is it okay for a man to hit a woman? That's just, I throw it back at you, because... It's, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't personally, it depends, it depends on, the, on the situation. Depends on it, her it size, depends. depends on who she is. Well, yeah. I think a woman hitting a man is leaving herself open for anything that comes back at her. Right. You can't hit anybody and expect there to be some form of... Your expectations are too high. That means you've already taken it upon yourself to violate every form of possible human rights and just do what you want. So if, you had a, if she had a knife and just said, I'm a woman, fuck it. And the guy dies, oh, but I'm a woman. I think the way society has imbalanced the situation, it, it, it plays a big role. Yes, women are genetically not as powerful as men, right? Mm -hmm. And for that reason, you should know where you lay. You shouldn't be doing anything that can... Come on, that's like me. Would I go and hit a bear? Something that's more physically imposing than me that I know that I'll be taking a chance with that bear. The bear might decide to not touch me because he might know he's powerful. They'll say, what if he says, yeah, fuck it, I'm going to eat you. I'm going to teach you your position in the food chain. Do you think women are quick to, to kind of put their hands on, on men? I think immature women are. Right. There's a difference. Yeah. A mature, respectable woman will use this and then think about this. Because this is how women fight. Men fight with this. You know what I'm saying? Women fight with this. So if a mature woman can assess a situation, yeah, I say, you know what, fuck it. You're not even worth it. That kills more than ever than that. Mm. You understand? What's, what's your views and opinions on cancel culture? Fuck, what's, what's, cancel, what's cancel culture? Where they kind of push to cancel someone. No, 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 yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Saying, but I'm asking you, what's cancel oh, culture? Oh, right, right. Did they pay my bills? Do you, do you, Would you say half of the things you're saying on the Instagram, in my face, I'll break your face. I'll literally break your face. And the reason I'll break your face, not because I think I'm some, because we are not from the same worlds. You mm. fight on keyboards. That's, your, that's how fast you are. But I'm fast with my hands and I'm fast. Like, it, it just wouldn't happen. I'm too confident within myself to ever think that somebody that can do that can come and say it in my face. It's impossible. 
Do you, do you think it's necessary though for some people? What, to troll? No, to cancel people. If, if they've done something. I think there are some issues. Yeah. It's not cancel, I think it's correcting. There are some people that should be removed. From social media. Right. If you've been proven to do something, proven, keyword, not public of court opinion where someone says something online and everybody's like, oh yeah, yeah, he did it. Because let's face it, I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. Mm. Someone can, can accuse me of something and I can have haters from 15 years ago who could use it as an opportunity to voice their malicious intent. And then what? It's a witch hunt. Mm. If you've been convicted and proven, not only by the officials, but it is facts. Well, what kind of things though? I don't know, I mean, paedophilia, be... rape, right. you understand, real abuse, like abuse, like physical, like all these kind of things should be backed up. And sometimes I hear people say stuff like, oh, you know, I, I, do, I do understand that there are some women or there are some victims, I call it victims, so I'm not, I'm not putting it in a sex class. There are some victims that don't feel that it's necessary to proceed and take it further by going to the government or whatever. That's entirely up to them. It's a personal choice, but use that, maintain that energy. If you're, if you're looking to date someone, mm -hmm. would you date someone who has a social media presence? I have um, before. Would yeah and i think it depends on the setup with a person i think i think it's very important to understand who you're getting with some mm. people do it for they actually make money from it and that's different All right but um i think it comes down to what your taste is me personally speaking i am not against it but i'm not for it i'm in the middle i'm in the middle i wouldn't mind i don't mind do you care about body count when it comes to a woman Does it matter? Oh, there's a lot of pressure on you though. Imagine you found out a girl's beat a lot of men, you're gonna be thinking about the last six that she had. Mm. But that's more of an immature thing. I think it comes to, it comes to a stage in your life where you're like, if she's for you, she's for you. But obviously if she's for the streets, then come on. Laura Harvey, come on. Like, it says it, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and what do you think about the black community right now? I, I know that's, that's quite a, a broad I think, question. I think, I, think, I think that's a broad... It is, you yeah. have to elaborate on that. I think we could do better, but there are so many... It's, it's such a big and open question, it doesn't really... Is there, is there enough positive... Um... There could be more. I think there are a lot more, but it's what's been allowed to be shown. Can, can black people be racist? Nah, it's impossible. You think? It's systematic. <laughs> so how can it be? What do we gain from racism? We are not the minorities. We are the majority. It's only in a certain parts of the world that we are 2% here, 4%. Nah. So you think they can't be racist to, to white people? How can you be racist to the people that made it? They made racism to fit their cause because they are a dying breed. To, to Chinese people? How? But it's systematic. We can't be racist. Unfortunately, the black community, we're, not unfortunately, but black people as a whole, we are very accommodating. Mm. Have you ever seen, have you seen how black people react when a white person comes? We look at them as, the, it's, it's the saviour mentality. We need to stop that. Do you think that still goes on? Of course it does. How many times when you were growing up as a kid, you wanted to get a, um, you wanted to go and see the doctors. And then as, as soon as you heard it was a black doctor, your parents would probably say, nah. Make sure it's a white doctor or an Indian doctor because it's, we, they've preached that self-hatred. We don't see ourselves as good as we should do. Uh. Think of it. It's a complex. It's an inferiority complex. But now, I'm, I, I go to the man, the best man for the job. But first of all, if I'm going to ink my skin, I'll go to a black tattoo artist because I know he's going to know the texture of my skin. Or mm. I'll go to a person who knows about my skin. You understand but mm -hmm. things have changed certain people will only go to white people because they classify them as all oh, professional and black people don't keep time and it's all stereotypes it's all self-hatred talk you know what i'm saying we have to do better we have to learn exercise um why do you think people gravitate to controversial characters because they need heroes they need something to believe in they need someone to refer themselves to if you're a simp of a man you've got bitch tits you understand? You look at someone like Andrew Tate, nicely shaven head, cool Louis Vuitton glasses, 
extra small t-shirt on a large body mm. gives you inspiration. He's so, a controversial, it gives you something to believe in because when your girl is at home telling you to shut the fuck up and she's slapping you around the head and you've got no motivation, you say, I need, I need to find something. You go and look at Andrew Tate and you go home and you say, listen, don't talk to me like that no more because you start wearing the tank tees and you shave your head. You, you need to believe in something. It's hero syndrome. So it gives you a bit of confidence. Yeah. What, you're well, what movie is a movie without a bad guy? Right. You can't have a good guy without a bad guy. And where do girls gravitate to? Well, the bad guy, probably. There you go. <laughs> uh, do you think controversial characters contribute positively or negatively to society? I think they do both. All right. They do both. Are they, are they normally quite positive or normally negative? I think it depends on what you, you classify as positive because, I mean, let's say, for example, drill artists, K Trap. I think he's a positive influence. In which way? In the sense of he's giving, you know, he, when you listen to some of his speeches, podcasts and so on and so forth, he right. always talks about, you know, reinvesting, you know, maintaining a sense of self-worth, owning your own, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> keeping it within your business, doing things independently, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. if you want to look at it from a negative aspect, he's talking about, you know, Busting a thing in your hand, trembling and all them kind of things. It depends on how you're looking at it and your views and perspectives. But Yeah, and where the money comes from. But you think about his records are selling. Why are they selling? It's what people want to hear, right? It's people what, what they want to hear. And there's also people that are pumping money into it. We all have that gene in us. We want to believe in something. We need to attach ourselves to something. So uh, what do you think about, about drug dealing? And, you know, how they're kind of praised in the maybe black community and music? I think they've been put into that community for a purpose to devalue us. To, to devalue us. We're not giving enough exploitation to other sectors of things. For example, you know, trading only came into the black community at a certain time, or generational wealth in terms of Black Pound Day and properties and all these things. We've, you know, most times when the black people were growing up, we just wanted to be footballers, musicians, and so on and so forth. So. The drugs also being pulled into that actress which was kind of like, yeah, you know, giving people way out of the hood, which mm. is all farmed anyway. It's all farming, programming, keeping people in certain brackets for a purpose. Well, even, even the labels and... and yeah, kind of man, the labels make money from that. The, the, yeah. the, the labels are the biggest. I mean, who was it saying it the other day? Meek Mills was saying it. There's certain amounts of music that will only sell when they're positive because they put more money into idolizing the big asses, the chains, the cars, the, you know, shooting people in the head, one of them kind of things. It makes money. Mm. It's profit. Would you, um, would you look at yourself as a controversial character? Yeah, why not? I, don't, I wouldn't say I'm a bad guy, I would say I'm real. So if you want to hear the truth, I'll tell you the truth. Fair enough. I don't care if I'm liked, I don't care what you think it is what it is. Um, do you think social media should silence more of these people here? Or do you social think, do you think they're kind of needed in, on social media? Social media is giving people that don't have a voice the opportunity to feel like they're in control and silencing people. Do mm. you, you, you get what I mean? Cancel culture was made by people to, to do their... It's, it's a new sense of witch hunting, jungle justice. It serves its purpose to some degree. Like, for example, that guy that was... Um, um, I don't want to say it wrong, molestering or doing what he was doing with that schoolgirl. And luckily for someone filming, for someone filming him and the, everybody was able to push that narrative around and he was quickly comprehended and arrested and um, justice was served. Um, what do you think of freedom of speech? Do we still have it? Nah. Freedom of speech is, is, is fake. <laughs> it's, 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 it's tapped. It's what like way? a safe box. The moment you start going out, you get a little shocked to go back into the lane. And that's what they showed you with people like Andrew Tate, Kate, Katie Hopkins, and all these other people. You start going a bit too far, they. So it's, they it's, show just, you. it's almost like. You, it's a ceiling. Yeah. And then, and then what? Then the cancel culture comes in. No, there's only one cancel culture, and that's corporate cancel culture right. this the urban cancel culture is is fake why because there's always somewhere where you can express yourself come on right come on 
Like, yes, I believe certain people should be removed. Cancel, what does cancelled mean? What does your opinion mean? You, the people that are even doing the cancelling, God knows what they get up to. God knows, because boy, if I went to your house, I'd see all kinds of shit. Mm. So be careful. Don't throw stones if you live in a glass house. <laughs> That's true. What, what do you think of the LGBTQ plus? I have no opinion on them. None at all? If you're gay, you're gay. If you're straight, you're straight. Be happy. I'm happy. I don't, I don't have any prejudice to nothing against them. Um, do you think trans people should be able to use what other ba bathroom? Eh? <laughs> trans people should use... Any, any gender bathroom? No. Why are you going to use... Might, why? So can a man use a woman's... Why? Because they've, they've made that transition. That's your bloody business. But keep it respectful. Do you understand? Because when you're dead and I'm dead, and thousands of years from now they dig us up and they do samples of our bones, what are they going to find? What are they going to find? Bones. Bones. Yeah, but what's he going to tell you? I guess what sex you mean, is that what you're trying oh, to say? Oh, that's the most important. You can't argue with that, can you? Yeah, but if they've made the sex change... What? Sex change? Yeah. It's not organic. No, no, but say, say if it's a man's... It's manufactured. It's not original. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But if, if a man's changed to a woman... Yeah. And made, made that sex think, change. I don't think if Mike Tyson mm -hmm. decided tomorrow to cut off his parts, yeah, put on a wig and go and use the women's toilets, what do you think would happen? I feel like someone would have something to say about it. 100%. Yeah. And that's the whole point. I think I respect your choices, but your choices should be respectful of others. You understand? Mm. Make your choice. We respect that, but you also respect our choice. Don't set confusion. Don't feeling is and all that is mental. It's all mental. So don't violate. Stay where you're supposed to stay. You can be whatever you want. That's fine. I'm not against it, but respect. If you're if you're kind of if you do you have children or I have a daughter. All oh, right, right. So if you don't mind me asking, just mm -hmm. hypothetically speaking, if yeah. your daughter came to you and said, Look, Daddy, I want, to, I want to be a boy. What, what would kind of be your, your thoughts? What would, what would you say to her? I'd say, come back to me in 48 hours. Right. Don't impulse talk. I think that the dangers that we have now is we're open to a lot of things, but a lot of the things that are being taught to our children mm. are not their personal thoughts. It's influenced. And some, more, some kids and some people are more impressionable than others. Mm -hmm. It could be a phase. It could be a phase. And then what? How many people have gone and done certain things to their bodies and then later on regretted it? And because of that, committed suicide. There, if you check the statistics, I don't argue. Go and check the statistics. A lot of people that have done the full <coughs> change, like I said, it's your choice, have later on regretted it. But they won't put that out there. They won't put that out there because it's not profitable. It's more profitable when a, a child... How can a child come and say, I've got mental health issues, right? <clears throat> they, will, they will say, uh, you know, take some time, get some counselling. But if a child says they want to change their sex, there's a big problem. Oh, we can fast track you into a certain group of people. You know, we can go into hormones... Uh, is it hormone, tra is it, what's the word for it? Hormone therapy. Hormone therapy, start giving you pills, pumping things into you to assist you. So they're helping you make a decision that is probably not even originally yours. Mm -hmm. So then what? A child is a child for a reason. You're supposed to have people that are supposed to chaperone you and guide you. So if, you know, for what it's worth, God is God. If my child ever did came to me like that, I think I would take a great step back and understanding where it's coming from. And then I'll attack that. She's my flesh. So whatever decision she makes, she makes. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. But there are consequences. Right, right. Um, what, what are your thoughts on, on trans women playing in... What is, sports. A what is a trans woman playing in sports? I I'll Just say explain a, it so I understand what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, yeah, all right, let me, let me phrase it. What, what do you think of a, a man who's changed to a woman 
competing professionally in, in women's sports. So if, if, if Mike Tyson again... Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. ...decided tomorrow to call himself Tyson Sequiqua. She wants to be a, yeah, if he wants yeah. to be a female I'm, boxer. I wanted to become a heavyweight champion mm -hmm. of the women's division and spark the woman <laughs> flat out. Mm -hmm. That's murder. That is no longer a sport. Women and men are genetically not, there's a disadvantage. So yeah, if you're, if, nah, it's not, it's, it shouldn't run. Like, what, what excuses? I don't wanna hear that. I mean, I watched the UFC man make a debut in the women's division and he, absolutely pulverized the woman. That's crazy. And I was like, yo, let me at him. I don't care if he calls himself Zandra. You're a man. Do you understand? Yeah. Like I said, respect. we respect your decision, but respect certain things that have already been there and they're there for a reason. Don't do too much. Do you think men should be forced to father a child with a woman that he didn't? want to have a child with. No, it's, one, it's probably one of the most dangerous things you can do. It's right. toxic. Uh, I think as it is as well, if, yes, we understand, I understand it's the woman's body, but if a man doesn't want to be a father, you can't force him. Even if you can force him financially, you can't force him mentally and spiritually. How? Because he will resent you, and then if he resents you, he's going to resent the child. So it's better you make your choices wisely or you become a single parent, why would you want to force someone to be there? He would despise the child because you, he would see you as the enemy. And what good is that to a child, an innocent child? So no. All right. Um, with, with controversy, again, um, mm. with, with certain characters, do you think the art of what they do should be separated from kind of why people are... There's certain things that people <clears throat> have done, yeah, that they, you can't really separate it. All right. You can't. You know, um, do you have any examples kind of that come to R. mind? R. Kelly, R. Kelly, we, yeah. we all love his music. Mm -hmm. I, I, well, I, I personally, I don't talk about it. I like his music, I respect his craft, but then certain things that he's done are unspeakable. I've got a daughter as well, so I have to think yeah. about these things. And there are people that will say, Nah, yeah, no, but I'm thinking of R. Kelly before the accusations. But then you're still in the same boat. You, you either go full throttle or you just don't. Don't would, be on the fence. Would you play his music or have you stopped playing it completely? If you want me to be honest, yeah. I haven't listened to R. Kelly. I've never really been someone that's been into him. Obviously, yeah. commercially, we've heard, I've heard his songs and stuff, but it's not my go-to. So, but if it came on, I'll jam to it, but <laughs> I don't really fuck with it, what he does. No, fair enough. Um, what are your thoughts on the blog pages? Kind of like Shade Borough made you think. They demand, they, they produce a service to a, a lot of nosy, unhappy people who like gossip. So the person that runs the blogs, they're the real winners because everybody else is a consumer. Mm. Nine times out of 10, if you look at what people do on their activities on their phones, the first thing they're doing in the morning when they wake up is they're checking the blogs. And when they leave work, they're checking the blogs. So it's a service that's seen it's seen a niche in the market and it's created it and good to them. But they're also responsible for, I think, intruding and fucking up a lot of people's lives. So there's quite a lot of negativity as of well? Of course it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you want the same mind, don't follow certain blogs. But made you think, I don't think it's like that. I think made you think's blog is more about, I think he just does a wide range of things, like wisdom, information. Shape yeah. has started to start doing that now as well, but their core fundamentals is just gossip. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> if you had to kind of, you know, look at a younger you, what, what advice would you give him? Uh, the younger me, watch who you call your friends. Right. Watch who you call your friends. Um, take time to understand yourself a lot more better, put that as a priority. When you understand yourself better, certain decisions you'll make will come easier. Yeah, and, and, and that resonates with me more than anything. Mm. So what, just take time to make decisions and yeah. Understand yourself more. Right, right, right. Really, really take time to understand yourself. If you understand yourself, that's the best gift you can give yourself. How, how did you kind of come to understand yourself a bit more? Through adversary, through certain situations, which I wouldn't, take back 
because I'm a firm believer that everything you're in now is because you allowed that to happen. So if I understood myself better at different times of my life, I definitely wouldn't be in certain positions now. So that's not regret, it's just more of a lesson. You understand? You have to take accountability. And uh, yeah, it's very important. Accountability will, will change a lot in your life, trust me. Cool, all right, last few questions. Um that we asked everyone as well. Mm -hmm. what, what inspires you in life? Money. Really? Yeah. What, what else are we living for? What are you here for? We, we, we're trying to generate money. I want to be, I want to work remotely. That's my, that's my go-to. I want to be hands free. Off. Yeah. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want to be tied down to anything or anywhere. I just want to be free, live my life. And when it's my time to go, I go living a good life. All right. What, what can we expect from you um, over the next couple of years? Um, or what are your goals? Short films, um, right. businesses. Well, I've got one or two that I've set up already that are doing, they're, they're all right. They're in the early stages, but they're doing very good in terms of their trajectories. Can I ask what they are? Uh, property development, nice. property management, and uh, service accommodations. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. um, do you know any names or do you, is there anyone you follow in the property world? I don't follow nobody. No? And I study it. I'm not good with names. And there's a, I, I tend to not learn. I just learn what they're saying. If it yeah. resonates with me, it resonates. I don't give a fuck about names. Okay, right, right, right. Mm. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I don't know. I just think it's just one of the things. I, I, it's just the way my brain's set up. I don't, I don't look at names unless it's repetitively in my ear. Yeah. No, nah, fair enough. Do you, yeah. do you know about... Um, are you, uh, right, do you know about a conspiracy? Person. Are you? Am I a flat earth? Yeah, person? are you a flat earther? Um... Explain what a flat earth means, because I've seen one yeah. or two things. It's just someone that believes that the earth is flat and not round, um, based, on, based on certain things. Have yeah. you ever been to space before? I've never been to space, no. Has anyone ever been to space? How many people have been to space? That, that's hard to say. Mm. That's hard to say. That depends so on what you believe you, in. I'm someone that believes in the practicalities. Yeah. I can't see the earth. So unless I go up there, I can give you the question, and I can give you the answer then. But mm. what I do believe is that there are certain, um, I saw this theory that there's like a... A dome? Yeah, like a, like the I, Simpsons, I kind of believe it. <coughs> the firmament. I kind of believe it. Because firmament. The firmament. Firmament. For those who know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> because, like I said to you, I believe that weather's controlled. Yeah. I believe that earthquakes and all these other forms of natural wild hazards are controlled. Why? Because it will play a service in terms of development, destroy and rebuild. There's no such thing as, um, I don't believe in, uh, what do you call this thing again? Global warming. Nonsense. Mm, you don't Nonsense. believe in that? Nonsense. You don't Nonsense. feel like the Earth's got hot? This world has been here for billions of years before us. We are babies in this land. Yeah, but you don't have all the cars and all the, all yeah, the stuff. Yeah, but what was it? All the exhausts. We, we are, we're primitive. We're not, what, what the hell are we? What, I think I'm, I'm, we're dumb. We ain't nothing to them. How were the pyramids built? People have got their theories, but there's so many theories. We, our information is limited. So how can we say, like I said, mm. most of these things, until you can see the practicality, how can you answer it? I know for a fact, if I went out of space, come back, come and ask me if the world is flat. It's a possibility. It could be. We could be living in a dome where the, the, the sun is just literally a part of the dome and it's spinning around. What's mm. Big Brother? Big Brother is formulated to show us what it's like when people are watching us. Yeah. So we could be like Sims, all these games, we, you never know. We our could, thoughts, are they yeah. really our thoughts? What's social construct? You put something in the air, who's gonna catch it? Us. Mm. So I don't call it conspiracy theory, I call it deep, deep consciousness. Right. Anything's possible. But do I believe the earth is flat? Hmm. I don't know. That's a tough one. I'm too, like I said, I have to go out there. Yeah, you have to yeah. check. Yeah, I have to check. <laughs> yeah, everything else is secondary information. Unless I've seen it myself, I don't know. Fair enough, fair enough. Mm. Cool. Well, it's been a pleasure interviewing you. Thank you. Picking your mind. Thanks for having me, man.